it's time to take a deep dive into the very simple yet quite complicated compositional tool that will elevate your street photography above the ordinary leading lines. Let's get into it. Lines. I've been dealing with them throughout my whole life. When I was at school, I had to repeatedly write lines after school had finished when I behaved badly. And now I'm repeatedly adding lines to my street photography, and that is leading lines. The only difference is when I was at school, I was given lines. Now I'm actively hunting for them. So in this exploration of one of the most impactful compositional tools that you can use, we are going to look at why these awesome compositional assets are extremely important to the viewer of your photos. And I'm also going to share with you how you can add depth and detail to make your street photography stand out. Leading lines are an important compositional tool because they help to draw the viewer's eye into your photo. And this is done in an intentional way. Once the viewer's eye hooks onto them, it's like an invitation for the person who's looking at your photo to explore the image. And they not only lead up to the subject, but they also lead into the center of the image and beyond. The viewer then gets the chance to explore the image, the details, the colors, the contrasts, and most importantly, the subject. The majority of viewers don't necessarily know what a leading line actually is, but they will instinctively use this compositional tool as you intended them to do so. Depending upon the street scene that you are shooting, there are different leading lines such as straight, wavy, converging. Plus, they also work in different forms. Here you have the very simple yet effective leading line, which is just a simple pavement or a road. However, they can also work much more subtly. In this image, there's a very subtle leading line created by the pattern of the brickwork on the ground. The bricks create diagonal lines that converge in the direction of the person sitting down on the bench, subtly guiding the viewer's eye towards the subject. Also, the shadow is angled in the subject's direction. These elements work together to draw the viewer's focus into the scene and towards the subject sitting on the bench making it an example of how leading lines can be more conceptual than just explicit lines. In this image, there is a subtle leading line in the frame of the window, which simply leads to the subject sitting down at the table. You can also find them in light and color. The colored lighting on the ceiling and reflected on the ground works as an ambient leading line that leads right up to the subject. It also adds extra visual interest in the way that the lighting and the reflections of the light are curved on the ceiling and on the ground. This great compositional tool doesn't have to be secondary to the subject. There are no strict rules in photography, and if you want, you can make the leading line the star of the show. In this image, the leading line takes you on a visual journey through this dark, narrow street with the interestingly textured and graffitied walls and the atmospheric hanging lighting. There are various places in every town and city that have overt leading lines that you can use to naturally create depth. So looking for leading lines is a creative endeavor because the most interesting ones, which I believe are the most subtle ones, are not always the most apparent. And the more that you apply them into your images, the more your photographic eye will be trained in spotting them. Once you have found a leading line, you can emphasize it by positioning your camera at a low angle which even turns this compositional tool into a foreground object. You can even emphasize them by positioning yourself close to a wall or a frame. Doing this not only adds the leading line to your photos, but also serves to add the compositional element of structure to your images, which is just another form of visual appeal in your arsenal. 
Of course, you don't have to emphasize them at all. If you're just using the leading line as a subtle approach, you don't need to change your perspective to meet the leading line. One thing that I do to make sure I get the leading lines looking balanced in the composition is to have them trail into either or both of the bottom thirds using the rule of thirds towards the edges of the frame. In this photo, the leading line, which is the pavement, the yellow road markings, the road and the traffic cones that trail off into the image that creates depth, which helps to amplify a sense of mystery with the darkened lights and the street in the background. Whereas in this image, the leading line in the paving and the walkway wall leads up to the subject who, who has a sense of wonder about her demeanor which is fitting in this giant brutalist structure that surrounds her. Imagine if I just lifted the camera up a few more degrees so that the pavement was obscured or I had got much closer to the subject so that the leading line was non-existent. You wouldn't get that sense of depth or that feeling of an all-encompassing surrounding. you can create a sense of motion in your photos depending upon how your subject is positioned on the leading line. If you look at this photo, the leading line not only exists on the brickwork ground, it also exists in the lighting. The most important thing here is that there's a sense of motion because the subject is walking with his back to us in the direction of the leading line. The slightly sci-fi feel of this image helps to convey that sense of movement. If you think about it, the leading line is like a story in a movie or a book. You start at the beginning and you wonder where it's going to take you in the end. Obviously, in an image, this is achieved on a micro scale for the viewer when they look at the photo, as the process of looking at a photo is done in a matter of seconds. But in the same sense that there is a feeling of suspense, wondering where the film is going to take you, there can be a feeling of tension for the viewer as they travel through your photo from the tip of the leading line up to the subject, visually reading the elements of the image. Obviously, this is always dependent on the content that you're providing the viewer. An empty garden space leading up to a hedge is not going to have the same effect on the viewer as a dark street leading up to a lone silhouetted subject. I've learned the hard way over the years that good composition can't be substituted for an interesting subject that's photographed in good light or in atmospheric nightlight. Twenty-eight up to approximately fifty millimeters will do for capturing leading lines. Wide-angle lenses have an expansive field of view that work to capture more of the scene and also exaggerate the foreground. Therefore, for leading lines, a wide-angle lens amplifies their three D-like qualities into the foreground. Of course. For more subtle leading lines, it doesn't matter what focal length you really use. Some of the photos that I've shown you were taken with the 70mm crop on my Ricoh GR3X. Any comments or questions so far? Let me know down below. So, if you want to practice shooting leading lines, Take a walk through your town or city and start shooting scenes that have obvious leading lines, such as roads, pavements, up against walls, against buildings. Take shots from different perspectives and angles, such as shooting from a low vantage point to emphasize them, and then get your photos uploaded to your editing software and review them and go out and shoot some more. Another exercise that you can use if you live in the city or somewhere where you know that certain structures in the sunshine leave distinct reflected streams of light on the ground or cast sharp elongated shadows. Practice capturing those shadows and the reflected light 
as leading lines that trail down to the bottom third of the composition. And as I said earlier, to make sure that your leading lines are balanced in the composition is to have them trail into either or both of the bottom thirds using the rule of thirds towards the edges of the frame. For subtle, implicit leading lines, you can be creative with where they begin and where they end. It really does help for practice though. Finally, to take these exercises further, play the waiting game and wait for a particular subject to interact with these leading lines, such as standing about using their phone, having a smoke, talking to somebody, or just walking along the street or past the building. That way, you've already improved on all of these exercises. Just a heads up, if you can please give this video a like and subscribe for more tutorials, tips and Rico GR3 and GR3X explorations, then I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to leave a comment. So to sum up, leading lines are not just an element of composition they also work as a storytelling element to your images connecting the fabric of your photo every element and guide the viewer throughout your image they also create depth and can create tension and even evoke emotions leading lines are the silent narrators that lead our eye on a visual journey and they beckon us to delve deeper into the image and discover its interesting story. So if what I've spoken about today has interested you and hopefully inspired you, just get out there and start practicing. If anyone asks me what the number one thing is that helped me get better as a photographer, it's practice. However, if you want to know the method to master shutter speed at night time, then check out this video here. Until we meet again, go forth and create.